Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here at my next Star Wars um, Kanan The Last Padawan comic review. This one is going to be for issue 3, which just came out on Wednesday. And um, yeah, I suppose that really the only thing to do is just to get straight into it. We have the same exact creative team on this as the last two issues. And I think this is 3 of 5, I think for the first arc. Um, maybe it's 6. So we're getting towards the end, but... Very much this just feels like a middle issue. Not a lot happens in here. It's definitely the one I read through the quickest and the one I came out of it going, that was all right, but not a lot happened. Like, I really think nothing massively notable is probably gonna happen until towards the end of next issue going into issue five. Because basically what happens in this issue is we pick up from the end of the last issue with um, Kanan basically in the atmosphere above Coruscant he suddenly realizes that he made a huge mistake in going to Coruscant and basically going through with them um, what the usual plan is for when something happens that all the Jedi go back to Coruscant he realized very late that he made the mistake when he got uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's message to stay away from Coruscant and he's surrounded by Arc 170 he's about to be basically killed because they know it's him because the ship was reported as stolen so, he basically gets fired at, manages to avoid some, some of the stuff, and escapes back to the planet he just came from, Kalar. And in doing so, he goes back to the place where he stole the ship from, with the, <laughs> the obviously, alien that um, we've been uh, introduced to for like the last couple of issues, and his name is uh, Janus Kazmir, um, who we obviously know a bit here. Obviously furious at the kid for stealing his ship, um, but Kanan basically explains it away. Like, if I wanted to steal it, I would have completely just left with it. Um, I brought your ship back. So, yeah, but basically just from there we just get like this idea that Kanan kind of wants to stick around with this guy. The big thing we're learning here is just that he really doesn't know what to do on his own. And Janus, Janus, whatever you want to call him, realizes this and is just like, look, I, I get it, you're used to following a master and you want a new one, but I can't be that person. Now please leave before I do something bad to you. And so he kind of goes off on his own. It, you get the idea that he's kind of like a, just struggling to survive on his own and he's kind of following Janus around the place. And from there, he just ends up following him to this business meeting which happens to go wrong and basically he's about to get like shot or something like that. Kanan jumps down, apparently injures slash kills one of the guy and allows them both to escape and he thinks he's in good with Janus now and they're going to work together and um, you know you just see that they have this kind of uh, very argumentative relationship that they're <laughs> He's constantly upset at what Kanan is doing, or Caleb at this point in time. And Caleb just wants someone to kind of be around, that he kind of somewhat knows in this crazy time for him. And we just get that Caleb, ha Caleb has to cut his hair, and we see him basically get the classic Kanan ponytail for the first time, cut off the Jedi and, uh, braid, Padawan braid, and take apart his lightsaber and put the holocron away. This is the start of just him as we see him at the start of Rebels, not using the Force, not using anything specifically related to being a Jedi. Um, and that's definitely probably the most notable thing that really happens in this in this issue. And he just kind of talks about how using a blaster feels all wrong, and the guy's just kind of saying that they have to do some stuff. And Caleb, Caleb realizes that he's a criminal, but still helps him anyway just because he's the only person he knows and so he helps him to do this thing and they're, they're set out to steal like some droids or something like that I don't even know if this is in any way important that was the thing they they just so quickly transition from this guy is now helping Caleb to now they're on this mission stealing droids and then they're running off and basically what happens is we get Gamut Ki, who is like the ambassador of this planet, Kalar, who we saw in the very first issue, 
basically agree to surrender or something like that to the Republic. And he's placing Janus under arrest. And Janus is just like, yeah, you have the authority to do that. But would you rather, would you not rather we team up to take out the Jedi? And basically the idea at the very end is just that he's selling out Kanan, Caleb, to everyone else to get himself out of a situation. Um, now, to be fair, the next issue looks like they're fairly friendly together there. So I'm not really sure what they're doing. It's probably just that this is going to be Janus's way to kind of distract everyone and he'll manage to get himself and Caleb out of the situation. But I think fundamentally where I'm not quite getting the connection here is I'm not really feeling anything incredibly strong in terms of any sort of a master apprentice bond between Caleb and Janus, like at all. Um, and now th there is the hint that Janus is telling him, you also need to change your name. Please pick something good. Until you pick a new name, you might as well not have one. And now we know he goes from Caleb Doom to Kanan Jarrus or something like that. And there, there are kind of hints throughout the book that the reason he changes his name to that is in some way because it was the planet Kaller that the big incidents in his life happened. Um, this guy Jarrus Kazmir is, has the reverse initials of what Kanan's name ultimately is, Kanan Jara, Jarrus or something like that. Um, so there's no obvious like reason for like, okay, where's, where does the name come from, Kanan? Um, but there's kind of hints there. So I think it's important that in the next issue and the, I suppose the last issue of this arc, that they just get across what the relationship is like between these two. Um, I think it's a little bit too focused on action right now in that so much of like the first like four or five pages of this book is just kind of pointless. Uh, oh, look, I dodged some attacks. Uh, I, I'm now away from the ships. And then suddenly he's fighting these guards to help Janus. And then you're straight away into this kind of hold up situation at the very end of this issue. There's not a lot of character stuff here. There is not a lot of just important plot stuff, I think. So definitely the last two issues haven't been wonderful, but they've been okay. In that I still want to know more about Kanan and obviously fill in the gap between here and the start of A New Dawn and make me understand how he goes from being the Padawan learner to being the Jedi that he is at the start of Rebels. Um, but yeah, there's, I just can't say that this issue in particular was particularly good. I think when like the first arc comes out in trade paperback form, it will read a lot better than it does. Like I waited a month for this issue and I read it and now I have to wait another month to see what happens next. It, it doesn't seem so good now because these like what, 22 pages or something didn't really accomplish all that much. The only really notable things were just the, like this idea that they were really trying to get across that Kanan at this point in time feels like he needs a master and this guy Jarrus seems to be the one that he's kind of latching onto right now. He has now apparently been betrayed by this very person and so Caleb is experiencing a lot of betrayal right now. Um, now eventually we find out that he because he comes on his own but is going by the name Kanan. So something happens I think is going to happen at some point that uh, um, Janus proves to Kanan that he does care about him and he'll be end up being just an important, important person in Caleb's life which will lead him to kind of change his name somewhat related to his new master's name and go from there. But again, I'm not quite sure if that's what they're going for. Because they haven't made me care about this guy, Janus Casimir, right now. And that's a bit of a problem three issues into like a five issue miniseries. But we'll see where they go. I just, it just, you know, I, I was looking forward to what happened next in this series. And it's just, it was like, really, I waited a month for this. And we're going to have to wait another month to get the, what happens next. And... I'm not even too excited about where they specifically go from here because it seems very repetitive that we've just had like this straight away the first issue here's Devil Balaba and Caleb Order 66 is the end of the first issue that was a really hot way to start the 
started the issue, uh, started the series. But then immediately the same thing happens just in space in the second issue where, oh no, he's not surrounded by clone troopers anymore, he's surrounded by ships trying to blow him up. And now the third issue has ended and now he's surrounded by aliens who want to kill him and his new quote-unquote friend who's just betrayed him. I'm kind of expecting issue four to end with another situation where Caleb is just trapped by someone in some way. And that's the problem right now. It's just a little bit repetitive. Every issue is kind of ending with the same rough idea. And I get that they're trying to get across how hard it is for Caleb right now just to escape the fact that he's a Jedi. But focus more on character so I can connect with the characters here rather than just really trying to expand this out over a couple of issues. So in the comments if you read the book, let me know what your thoughts were on issue 3. Um, maybe you'll be more positive than I was, I just didn't really feel a lot happened. But uh, other than that, that has been the review. Thanks for watching, and bye.